Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I did this really cute red bandana set. I absolutely love it. It can be done in any color and it's really, really much easier than you may think. So let's get into the video. Okay, you guys, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys what we're trying to recreate. So I'm going to kind of show you guys a little bit of the messages that she sent me and what she wanted. So she wanted this picture right here. I slowed it down because I feel like I always show you guys too quickly. So she wanted this, but as you can see, there's like LV and there's French tips. So she kind of just showed me this to reference. This is more of what she wanted. So I went more of the second little video that you just saw right there really quick. But um, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. And she wanted to change it so that the middle finger has a V French and some rhinestones. And then there's some plain red and then some bandana nails. So I just kind of switched it around with what she wanted. She kind of sent me a message explaining everything that she wanted on every finger. So that's what we're going to do. We're starting off with the Madame Glam base coat and I'm going to be base coating all of the nails and we are going to be making the set an extra long coffin. I do get these tips from um, E-Nail Couture and I'll link them down below. And I really like these tips honestly but I like using the base coat. You can even do like two layers of base coat just to really build them up and add a little bit more strength which is, which is what I really love. So yeah I just sped this up a little bit because it's kind of self explanatory. Um, I just go in thin coat so that the nail doesn't end up bulky at the end when you're done with all the coats of like the design and everything like that. So now I'm going to be going in with this really 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 beautiful red color. I think it's called Ferrari Red from DND. It's really really nice. It's a really good color. I'll put the name of it down below. I was just showing you guys another one. I think that one's called Raspberry or something like that. But that one was a little more uh, magenta toned for what I wanted it to look like. So I wanted it to look more of like a true like um, bright red. So I am just going to be cleaning off the nails with some acetone or I mean alcohol with some alcohol and a lint-free wipe and I put this little white background down just so that you guys can see better. I feel like when I use the blue stands that it can kind of like alter the like camera a little bit in a way. I don't know how to explain it but when I use my light pink stands it's way better. So yeah I'm showing you guys the color right there and then I am just going to be doing that color um plain on the thumb and the pinky I believe so I'm going to be doing this and I love this color as you guys can see it's really really nice and pigmented what I love is DND is kind of like per like fairly easy to find it, like no matter what nail supply store you go to most of the time they always carry DND or DND DC as well I really love both um, lines from them. They're both really good. And as you can see, I'm like wiping stuff on that paper that might be kind of annoying, but it's because I saw a little piece of lint, so I get it out and just wipe it on the paper that I'm using. I also like um, doing that, like keeping a paper underneath because of this reason, because it makes for easy cleanup at the end. I know that you can even use like dental bibs for that, but I haven't got any, so I just do this for now with like leftover paper that I have from printing my orders out. And I am going to be doing, I believe, two coats of this red. It is really pigmented, but I just want to make sure that everything looks really, really nice and flawless. I really wanted this set to be as perfect as I could possibly make it just because I really, really wanted to exceed this customer's standards. Like, I really wanted to make sure that she got exactly what she wanted. I know sometimes people will message me and be like, are you able to do a design like this and stuff? And I'm so like, it's so nice that they ask because I, I like when people don't assume that every person that does nails knows how to do a certain design um i feel like sometimes it could be really hard especially if you're a beginner or things like that but you shouldn't feel bad about that it takes time for sure to learn new skills and things like that and how to paint so by looking at this these pictures i was like oh yeah i can definitely do that because like from far away it looks really detailed like this design but once you're really actually watching like someone do it it's really not that hard like at all so it's definitely doable and i have very 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 shaky hands you guys and if i can do these designs you definitely can as well So I feel like getting like really good line work, it depends on the products that you use. It really does because if you use like watery colors, it can be like different. So I'm going to be using these white gel paint and the black gel paint from Madame Glam. You guys know I love these. These make you create like the most beautiful pigmented lines ever. I love using those when I do V-tip and stuff like that as well. If I'm able to, you guys will see in a second. I'm actually going to be using the red Madame Glam one for the middle finger for the V-tip nail because it just really, really helps out like... Um, you need no more than one coat and it just really makes everything so easy to do. 
So right here you can see the thumb and the pinky are already top coated and I don't want to or not top coated sorry they're <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking you guys I was thinking of something else but they have the two coats and I was saying I was going to say that I don't top coat them even though those nails are done I like to top coat everything at the very end just in case you guys because I'm very like I said earlier oh I said I'm shaky but I'm shaky and I'm also very clumsy so I noticed that sometimes if I'm not really being careful or if I can't really see that good sometimes when I'm filming I try to look at my camera a lot while I'm painting just to see if I'm in frame and I get a little bit of gel polish stuck on one of the nails that's quote unquote done like right here if I was painting and I got a little bit on the thumb and it would be such a pain if I had already top coated it so if for some reason I was to get a little bit of color on the pinky or the thumb or something when I'm painting my design I know for sure that I'll be able to go back and buff it out because it won't be top coated yet. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically wait till the end to top coat all the nails together. I don't know if everyone already does that, but it's just a little tip because I used to try and like top coat the nails that were already finished like right away. And I feel like it's better just not to not do that. But right here, I'm just going to be using one coat of 112 by Raya's Nails. I really really love her nudes a lot of people ask but I know a lot of people are new but I really love those nudes those are really really good colors and I also use eye gel beauty nudes I'll link my favorite nudes down below I think I'm gonna start trying to link it in almost every video or whenever I try to remember like what good nudes are or like where you guys can get some good nude colors I'll link like different websites because I know that's really important with getting really and nice press the key to getting a really perfect nude base color is to layer your colors so I'm going to be going in with 218 by Ryo's Nails after this on top of this color just so I get a really nice nude shade and I get what I'm looking for so I'm going to be going in I'm going to show you guys right here what it looks like and yeah this is what it looks like it's really cute I like her packaging a lot too sorry you guys I was like fixing my camera um, but yeah, I just go in like this and if you guys are wondering I don't film like on a camera camera I you film on my phone So sometimes like I feel like I really need a camera because My phone can just be kind of iffy sometimes like sometimes it just goes out of focus like for no reason And then good thing I'm like always checking my phone while I'm recording because sometimes I'll catch it I'll stop recording and then re-record again But yeah, anyways, that was random. I am just doing that one coat on top of Raya's nails 112 and then I'm going to be grabbing my red gel paint by Madame Glam and I really love this one. I was saying that I was going to use this for the middle finger and I take a really long brush. You guys, this is key to creating a flawless V-tip nail. If you already do nails a lot, you probably know this already, but you guys, the smaller the brush, the harder it'll be to get a perfect straight line. I've explained this to a few people because people always ask me like, how do you get such a straight line? Like no matter what I do, I can't get it try to use a 20 millimeter brush you guys 20 millimeters so you can look up on amazon or something or you know what i'll link some down below for you guys i'll link some from aliexpress if you're okay with waiting or i'll link some from amazon that are really good as well it has to be at least like 20 millimeters and it'll really help you out with that perfect straight line so as you can see it was really easy for me to do that like this video is sped up like times two but i swear you guys this makes it so easy and so fast to do and I really love using this long skinny brush. Sometimes the 20 millimeter brushes, depending on like the brand and stuff, will be like a little thicker. You can use like thick ones, but personally I cut mine myself. I explained this in like a farther video, but you guys, it's literally crazy because I always forget like, I always think that I'm talking to those of you that have been here since like the beginning and like it's only like a few people but I know that there's always new people coming and watching my video so I really appreciate you guys and I know you guys want to learn as well so um I do cut my own brushes if they're a little too thick you can kind of tell maybe if you look really closely that the brush is cut a little bit so what I'll do is I'll pick up some of the bristles from the thing and literally just cut it off with scissors you might be able to tell right here you can see that there's like some hairs sticking out that are shorter. Those are just because I cut it and I wanted the brush to be as thin as possible. So I don't know if you guys saw me stick like my dotting tool into the red. I was just mixing it up because sometimes like when I don't know you guys probably know this but like when your gel polish is sitting for a while you might have to like remix it because you don't use it that much. So this red I haven't I don't think I've ever used it. I think I'm only using it like once but I like to mix it up. So I just mixed it and I'm using um, whatever was left on that little dotting tool just so that I don't waste any product and yeah This is what I'm doing here. I like to fill it in like this I feel like it's personally satisfying to me to do like I love doing it like this But you can definitely go in with like 
um, any type of like poly gel brush or something like some type of little round brush that you can just dip it into the red and fill it in. It'll probably be faster. I'm not really sure, but I just do this method all the time and it works very well. I feel like it really evens out the color. And I notice when I use little round brushes like that, that the color doesn't get as even like there will be some thicker parts and then it won't cure right and it's just a mess so i noticed that using the thin brush really helps you get an even application all around and oh my gosh you guys i love the little red splatter on the paper that's to so halloween vibes so let me know you guys i wanted to ask you do you guys are you guys already interested in like fall videos and like halloween nails and stuff or is it too early like i literally got you guys i literally went to starbucks today oh wait hold on like let me talk about this so I, these are like my favorite brushes i'm just showing you guys the ultra liner long fine liner and then the ultra detail i think from madame glam those are like some of my favorites but these aren't long brushes the long one that i was using right now to do that middle v tip was actually a super old brush that i think came in either a paint set or like a makeup set or something i don't think it was makeup actually i think it was a nail set but it was literally when i first started doing nails you guys like years ago so um i don't even know where it's from but i'm definitely gonna link some really good tw 20 millimeter brushes for you guys and now i'm showing you guys that i'm taking my long fine liner brush and i'm gonna be dipping into the white and the black gel paints by madame glam and that now i'm gonna start on my design so yeah you guys sometimes they get stuck and stuff but i love them literally my white madame glam gel paint is almost done you guys like that's how much i use it it's almost completely empty i filmed this video i don't really know when i think like probably like two weeks ago and i swear you guys i use it for every set that i can like anytime i can use it i literally use it because it's so so nice so what i'm doing here is i'm going to be creating some raindrop shapes I'm kind of referencing the photo, like looking at the photo that the customer had sent me, but I'm kind of trying to just replicate it as best I can. Like I said, I'm very shaky, so I don't have like a very steady hand. And that's how I know like anyone can do this design because it's literally just little lines, little dots, and little like um, drop shapes, like oval shapes or like things like that. So here I'm just going in and I'm kind of just drawing some little lines going up on the little uh i don't know if that's like a raindrop shape yeah raindrop and then right here i'm just gonna be creating some round lines on the sides it's kind of really hard to explain like how a bandana design goes you guys i really don't know but almost like a rainbow shape and you guys this doesn't have to be perfect um i say this like all the time but like when things aren't so so perfect i feel like they turn out way better like more i don't know like more effortless and they look really cute and I'm sorry if I say like a lot. That's literally just in my vocabulary. I don't know how to stop it. But now I'm just going to be going in like this. And just creating some small ones. Almost like a flower I guess you can say. Like little. Uh, basically like almost like a little flower design on the side. But like really long. Like elongated. And yeah. So I'm going to be doing that. And I'm just going to kind of repeat this process over and over again. And then adding dots and little designs or more detail as I go along. And like I said you guys my phone literally slowly starts to move itself on this tripod tripod thing that i used to film i really need to get a new one so if you see me adjusting the camera that's why but i was saying you guys i literally went today and got my first fall drink i think they literally like fall drink from starbucks i think the starbucks fall drinks came out yesterday i'm not really sure and you guys i'm not like a crazy starbucks addict but i do love some starbucks so i always get the ice chai latte and I get it soy with light ice and I add the pumpkin cold foam and you guys it's so good. And I've always got that like like since like fall last year. And I've recently started adding pumpkin into the chai. Like I think it's like pumps of pumpkin or something. And oh my gosh you guys it's so freaking good. You guys need to try it. If you like chai you'll love it. And you, probably even if you don't you've never tried it you probably will still like it. It's so so good. I feel like um i let my boyfriend try it and he doesn't really like chai that much he goes for more of like a green tea or like an acai or like a refresher or something and he actually liked it as well so it's very surprising because he doesn't really like anything like that and yeah you guys so right here i'm just going in i'm drawing these little lines so you're gonna start at the top and drag down like start at the top and then drag down so that you create that thick and then thinner little effect almost like you're creating like a leaf i guess you can say that's like the best way i can explain it and then on the corner right there, I did do like a little, almost like a lace design, like just drawing the line and then drawing little bubbles around it. 
sorry I really don't know how to explain it but that's how I'm doing that and then I'm just going in and going like this you can literally see that my lines aren't perfect they aren't flawless but we are going to literally do a bunch of dots with the dotting tool and thing, things like that so most of it's probably going to get covered up so it doesn't really matter and at the end of the result it's just so so amazing I really love the way it comes out but yeah you guys I was literally just going to ask you um do you guys want like fall content already like halloween um fall nails and stuff i got some new colors and i'm so excited to try them out and like see what kind of fall designs i can come up with i really want to do like a hand painted leaf design like a really easy one for like beginners if you're not that confident in your painting i want to do some really easy designs for you guys that you can do these designs that i do like these ones like these really intricate type of ones i think these are pretty simple and if they're hard, I'll probably tell you guys like, oh my gosh, you guys, this was really hard or something. And I do really like to just record these because I'm making these for the customer customer anyway. And then occasionally I'll get comments and people will ask me, oh, did you like film these? And I'll be like, sometimes I say no or like sometimes I just leave it because I feel so bad. I'm like, oh my gosh, I should have filmed these. Like these would have been such a good tutorial for people that wanted to learn how to do this. So um, that's why I record stuff like this, like nails that I'm already going to do. But I love doing nails for fun as well. Like these are fun to do. Of course, it's like what I love. But I definitely love to do some fun designs that I where I can just like really do my own thing and freestyle and do whatever I want. So I'm thinking of doing my nails again. I really love the last nails I did on myself. And I think I want to do some fall nails. So if you guys want to see that, let me know. I know I always tell you guys like, what do you want to see? What do you want to see? And I know a lot of people have told me they want to see like how I record and stuff like that. I feel like that'll just be a quick video though. It's really nothing special. It's actually just like really quick and um, very like not detailed or anything. But I could definitely do that video. And then people always ask me like my press on videos are like what people ask me for the most. But I definitely want to do like more acrylic and stuff. I haven't really been doing acrylic on anyone, but I will definitely do them on myself for you guys so you guys can see some tutorials and some new designs and things like that. I really love to encapsulate you guys. I would love to do some encapsulation videos for you guys. So let me know what you guys want to see. I just want to know what you guys like. And I also have some poly gel, so I really want to do poly gel and try that out again. My first time was alright. It was kind of a fail. I don't really know. I have high expectations for myself, so I was just like, okay, it was alright. But I would love to try again. So I do have some poly gel and stuff that I want to try out. And I'm really excited for that as well. And yeah, you guys, I... I'm just gonna let you guys kind of watch i'm basically just going in with little dots and i went in with the black and outlined certain parts of the white you can literally do this however you would like i would say outline the inside of the little um raindrop shapes and in the middle of the little like flowery type of design ones just outline with black a little bit just to add a little more definition and it really gives it that bandana look and these would be so cute you guys for like a little like a cowboy theme party or like a cowgirl or something like these in pink would be really cute as well so you guys can definitely use that to your advantage in case a client or someone ever asks you for them or asks if you have any ideas you can add like this design on one nail and maybe on the pinky or something if you don't want it to be too much so you can definitely use this design for lots of different things and now we're going to be going in with the uh same kind of design on the other finger but i am just switching it up a little bit adding more of the drop little raindrop things and yeah, you guys, I'm just going to let you watch this.
Okay, you guys, so coming up to the end of the set, what I wanted to do was add some rhinestones right here in the middle. There wasn't too many rhinestones on the inspo pictures, but I asked her if I could add some because I felt like it would really add to the set and really make it look cute. If you're more simple, you can definitely, of course, you know, do whatever you like and leave it like this. I just wanted to add some rhinestones, make it more bedazzled. So I did ask her and she was like, yeah, of course, you can do whatever you want. So I was really happy about that. And I am just going in with my McCart rhinestone gel. You guys, this is my favorite thing to apply rhinestones with. To this day, on a lot of different videos, I'll get questions about what I use on my for my rhinestones. And it's this right here. You guys, I swear by this. It's really, really good. Um, this and Zule's Bling Adhesive are my two faves. And I love both individually. They're both really good. They're both very, very, very strong. But, like, as much as far as, like, durability... The only thing I don't like about the Zule's Bling Adhesive is sometimes when I use it, it'll like burn my eyes if I get too close to the nails. I like to be really close when I'm like working on my sets and I think it's just the fumes from the glue and also I don't have a lot of time to work with it before it dries. And with this one, I have lots of time to work with it because this dries in the UV lamp. So I'll link this down below if you guys wanted to get it. I do have a code with McHart. It's Nail Slayed by Val and then I'll just like put that in the description in case you guys wanted to get it. You can just get some money off. It's just to help you guys out and then... Um, I am just adding a bunch of different size stones. My favorite sizes to use are SS10, SS8, and SS12. I usually don't really go much bigger or um, much bigger than that. I usually, if I need small rhinestones, I'll use a few small ones here and there. But I, um, if I'm using smaller, I usually go in with SS6. Like here, those are SS6, I believe, or SS5 even. I'm not really sure, but I usually use either one of those two. And I do that to kind of fill in any small little gaps that I feel like could just add a little more detail. Just adding really small rhinestones can really amp up your gem placement, your bling placement, and everything like that. Just so that um, everything looks very, very nice and it just makes it look more detailed overall. So I do like doing that and I was just adding a bunch of different ones here. And I do sell these rhinestones on my nail shop page. It's Nail Shop Slayed by Val in case you guys were wondering. So in case you were interested. And I do love these stones so much. They're so, so shiny and I really, really love them. But yeah, you guys. So this is what I do here. A lot of people always ask me how I add my rhinestones to a matte nail as well and what i'll do is i'll probably either matte top coat first then apply the gem glue afterwards or sometimes i even matte top coat around the stones just to make sure that everything's really nice and mattified but i am going in with my um eye gel beauty no cleanse top coat and i'm just going to be going in on all the nails and then like i said on the bling nails i'll just go around it as carefully as i can i've said this before but if the Rhinestone is smaller than an SS8. I don't really care too much about the top coat getting on the rhinestone because it won't you won't really be able to tell because the rhinestone's so, so small, you know? It's just the big ones that you should really be careful about. Make sure not to get any top coat on them. So yeah, I really like doing that. And then my favorite part is to really shape them up. So that's what I'm gonna do after this.
Okay, you guys, so now it's time to package up my set. So what I do is I use double-sided foam tape to put my press-ons on. I remember when I first started doing press-ons, you guys, there was no press-on videos out. Like, there was nothing showing me, like, what, how I can do press-ons or what I even use to stick them on or anything. And if there was, it wasn't very detailed whatsoever. Now there's all, probably a lot more videos, but... It's crazy like how things change. So when I first started I didn't know what I was supposed to use and I was literally using regular tape and I didn't know like what I was supposed to do. So you can use either like the clear jelly type of double sided tape, the thick one, or you can use foam tape. I just like the foam one just because I feel like, um, I don't know, I just feel like it's easier just to kind of store because I noticed that the other one is really sticky and a lot of stuff gets stuck to it like including lint and stuff so I like this one a lot more and I will link the one I use down below it's really affordable and I really really do love it it keeps my sets in place for transit and to make sure that they don't move or anything like that and then after that I always make sure to dust them just one more time and then clean them off with a clean little paper towel or something and this is the final result you guys always make sure to clean your nails off before you take pictures before you take videos before you post them on your Instagram or your, your social media just to make sure that you get off any fingerprints or any smudges of any kind that are on the nails the natural oil from your fingers can get on the nail and it'll alter your photos so always make sure you clean them off with a clean paper towel or something like that and then dust off any lint to get the most clear photos but yeah you guys that's pretty much it for this video i really hope you guys enjoyed this um i do pack and ship my press-ons using paypal shipping you can you can also use pirateship.com but yeah i really love 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 how these came out i actually just re recreated these in brown so i'm so excited about that those came out really cute i'm going to be posting them on my instagram later today and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And I have so many more videos coming for you guys. I love you so much and appreciate all of the support you guys give me. So yeah, that's it for me. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.